This is the 25th ward of Chicago. It includes the area from Ashland Avenue on the east to Sacramento Boulevard on the west and from the Eisenhower Expressway on the north to the Chicago River on the south. About four square miles with 55,000 people in a lot of urban industry. The 25th ward is the home of Alderman Vito Marzullo. He's lived in this neighborhood for 68 years since he came from Italy. He has served in the city council as Alderman for the past 25 years. He's also the head of the 25th Ward regular Democratic organization as Ward Committeeman. Vito Marzullo has been an important and colorful Chicago politician for decades. The program was taped when Alderman Vito Marzullo was 80 years old. And I am John Damagala, and I've been Alderman Marzullo's personal secretary for the last 18 years with pleasure. And this is the look at the man and his world. cut because I'm on the job. I know what's going on. And I've been on the job for 58 years. I've been a precinct captain myself. I've been ward superintendent for 22 and a half years. I've been a member of the legislature for 14 years. I am the dean of the city council. Do I look like a natural dumb? <laughs> I think Marzullo is one of the last, without question, one of the last of the old-time machine politicians in Chicago. Uh, he grew up in this organization. He spent his whole life in it. He spent his whole life in the neighborhood in which he now lives. He never thought of leaving the neighborhood. He's essentially a politician. Since I came from Italy, this is the neighborhood I lived 68 years ago between Allstate Street and the West Side here. Things have changed because this used to be uh, well, Jewish, Irish, and, uh, and uh, a few Italians. Because in the South End, you always had Polish people. But now, because we have the Mexicans and the Puerto Ricans, you know, we have a few of the... Uh, yeah, some black. Yeah. But uh, we, we, thank goodness, we haven't had too many problems. I said last night was a little... Say, I remember years and years ago when there were a lot of Italians yeah. on the west side. They were shooting it out from time to time. There were no angels. Yes, that's right, you Italians were. I was a little disappointed when I came here. You've been married for how long? It'll be 56 years a week from tomorrow. 56 years, and I've been listening to this politics for 56 years, mind you. It's a long time. Because you were born in England, actually. Yes. Her father and myself my parents were born in the same town in Italy. We came from, they went to England, and I came here. Her oldest brother came over here. And uh, he was here with his wife. In Chicago? Yeah, and we were living on Levitt and uh, Polk Street here together. We were very friendly. We worked together in the sheet shop with the kids and everything. So then he, he had a visit his parents in England. He visited his parents in England, and he sent a picture to <coughs> his wife, that was her sister-in-law, of the three girls. Two, two girls and father. No, was it three? No. I say, hey, look at these two nice girls. I think I can send for one of them over there. And I pointed out, things that her sister, she was better looking, she was. <laughs> So it's just the levels in England because they came from England over here. From Italy, went to England, and England they came here. Oh, uh, she said, uh, beautiful girls, nice girls, but you know, really, for your wife, for your kind of a man, here's the girl. Why are you thinking of her? She, <laughs> she really had you. <laughs> so. Down packed, didn't whatever she? Whatever happened, I don't know what happened. I wrote her a letter, and I wrote her brother a letter. I wrote her a letter. She went to her brother and wrote a card. Hey, Just like the old country style. What's this? Uh, this guy here writes me a letter. And this in, in a time. Yeah, so we, we corresponded for about 15 months. Yeah. Yes. Then I came here to my brother. He says, well, why don't you come here to my... You know, I came here to my brother. So she came this country to her brother. Uh -huh. So what did we do? Did we fall in love, or did you fall in love with me after all, or did 
wife fall in love with you. I don't know what happened. We got married. <laughs> How soon after you came here? Oh, yes. A couple of months. That was what year? In 1922. It's an original wedding picture. Where were you married? In St. Michael's Church there on 24th Street. 24th he was just a little politician. He was just a, a yeah, precinct so captain. Perfect. He was just a precinct captain. Well, I didn't know anything. We didn't know anything about politics. We don't have politics like that in England. They have a precinct captain. And <laughs> I didn't know anything about them. But he was talking about I asked my brother, what is he? What is he? What is he supposed to do? He's when he gets votes. I said, oh. Uh. So we said, well, so the next thing you, you, because I became a citizen under his paper because just before um, yeah, that law was, came out in September or October September or something. Yeah. That year, 1922, so it was a good thing because I didn't know anything about <laughs> your I know English history but I didn't know anything about American history. But I became a citizen and uh, naturally the first voting period I had to vote. And I've been voting ever since <laughs> for this Six children and 19, 19 grandchildren. Now don't ask the name of the 19 grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs> we have to get them together and sort them out first. <laughs> well, that's, that's, the, that's the proudest, the, that's the thing that you're proudest of as well, I would say. Yes, 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 it is. For good reason. Nothing better when you can raise a great oh, family, yes. and especially what's, when you know what's going on all over the world. Say, I'm not condemning the whole country, but I say this country better wake up or they <laughs> won't have no country left. Every other country is in the same shape. I well, think. I'm worried about my country here now. <laughs> <laughs>
sidewalk 
Soviet and Russia and the House of Commons and Great Britain. It fits somewhere in between. You people don't know how can I find out what's going on. Hi, Commissioner. How are you? Every Democrat. 
Democrat and not angel, and every Democrat and not a crook. Every Republican not angel, and every Republican not crooks. You've got two kind of people in public life. One kind of people put their heart and soul where the money is, what they can get out of it. Another kind of people, that's me. I put my heart and soul and everything I got in me with my heart in Your Honor, for me is present. That's me whether they want to believe it or not. They got to believe me whether they want or not because that's my record in public life. A dollar never became my God. Let us bow our heads in prayer. <coughs> Heavenly Father, giver of all gifts, we come to you today to ask your blessings on this assembly. You guide everything in wisdom and love. May that same wisdom and love direct our mayor and all our city leaders so that all their deliberations today may bring harmony and justice to all our citizens possessing the high will spirit of this great city. It's not a debate format like the House of Commons. It's not a complete ratifying assembly like uh, the Supreme Soviet would be. It's not a legislative body like Congress or the Illinois General Assembly. It's essentially a, a place where they meet, they know what's going to happen, certain people are given certain roles to play, they play those roles, they make those speeches. That's essentially where the council functions. It has very little to do, actually, with the governance of the city. I told Judge down the week trade, you'll find metal in chairman or the election commission, I'll have my father put me to the ERA in Springfield. Second son. Two sons and four daughters. Nineteen grandchildren. I'm worse than your people. Give them a chance. Politics at this level is not about issues. It's about garbage cans, street holes. Can you get somebody a job? Can you get something fixed? There's a light out in the street. We want that light put fixed. That's what politics is about. 
captains, I have to interview 20 of them for this monograph I'm doing on Marzullo's work, the captains are totally non-ideological. They have no ideology, no philosophy. For them, politics is basically taking care of people, doing favors for people, getting a job themselves out of it so they can make a living themselves, and that's about what they get out of it. There's graffiti on a wall there, forming an organization here to stop the kids from doing that. Do you want to come? Can I bring him in now? Disciple's been writing all over the Waz and all this other stuff. Uh, St. Anne's Church. We just want to take, you know, all that literature off of the Waz and just clean it up. Wherever you see Disciple's, we want to take it off. I'm not in a club. He's in the club. I just, I, it's about time somebody, I'm a little older than them. I understand it's because I got to look at it all the time and other people have to look at it. We have a little bit of paint and we're trying to take it off, but we'll need a little more help. But you're going to start something to mean that you won't be able to finish. Now, as I said, you come over here to give any financial help. I can't start this program because if I start that program, somebody else come into another program. Like, like I got the ball team and the bowling team. Oh, and the I'm not out there for fun and games. The kids want to paint. Everybody's willing. They need a little concept. <coughs> Me, and I have another friend. We, uh, my friend is right in the neighborhood. And uh, he's willing to help, too. The, all these kids need is a little counseling. Show them how to do the job and how it's done. And I got all these kids willing to back me up. Right now, Mr. Marzillo, they're painting right now. We left, me and Garrett, we left just to come and see see you if if you would know any, you know. Let me ask, let out. me ask this fair question. What makes you come from the extreme south side that you want to clean this neighborhood up? And you can't get the property owner themselves to do it. Well, it's hard. You would have to live in a neighborhood to understand this. I come from this old neighborhood. I'm always there in the old neighborhood. But I understand, but don't you think that the property owner themselves we should start a program like that among themselves? I mean, it has to be a little bit realistic.
drought. Let's get to it. I want to get on. The 25th Ward has changed tremendously in the makeup uh, of its constituency, of its population. When Alderman Marzua first got into office, the ward was practically about, it was almost 100% white, ethnic, heavily Catholic. Now, it's changed a great deal in two ways. The, whole, the north end of the ward has gone very heavily black, and the south end of the ward is very heavily Latino these days. So these days, the ward is approximately about 40% black, and probably about 30% Latin, and probably heavily almost, and those Latins are practically all Mexicans. Probably about 15 to 20 percent Polish. That used to be a heavily Polish ward on the south end of the ward. It's possibly 5 percent Italian, and it's probably about 3 percent Slovenian. Uh, it's a, uh, it's, it's still a ward in very much in which the ethnic groups in the ward live in enclaves separate from each other and have very little to do with each other outside of politics. As I said, you've got to be Philadelphia lawyer. You've got to be everything from a street cleaner to psychiatrist to be an alderman nowadays. Is, is that different from the way it used to be? Oh, yes. A lot of difference. A lot of difference. The request and demands that they have nowadays never in the history. If you were here a couple of weeks ago, you told 15 people. Some live in Cernac in California and in Fairfield and Boston. Kentucky just went around the country with the demands. That's enough for me. When they came with the demands, I said, You are a luck kid. You don't make no goddamn demands of the Solomon. Number one. And number two, you criticize the community. Who made that community? Who made it? Your people made that community. Not the Italian, the Poles, and the Jews, and the Irish. That west side of Chicago used to be the gardens part of our city 25, 35 years ago. These were all black, black kids, huh? And young Mexican. Mexican. I said, you know, if your people really don't like, why don't you go back to Mexico where you came from? a better country, that for you, you can speak the language. You don't have to teach anybody to speak English, Italian, or Polo there, like we have to do here to, to tell our people to speak Spanish to you. Sometimes it's a little too open. For politicians. I mean, it, uh, sometimes you can avoid saying something, and uh, but he doesn't. They shouldn't be interested in me or you or somebody else. In Mexico anymore, and I, uh, you should be interested about Italy, where I came from. What the heck they care about Italy, or Germany, or Poland? When are they going to learn to be American under these conditions? Think what's going on in that humble part. It is a disgrace, a disgrace. Would those conditions ever existed when the Poles and the Irish and the Germans and the Italians were around it? Why these conditions exist now? Who made, the, who made these conditions over there? Do you think the people that live there made it for themselves? Well, nobody else. Who's afraid to say the truth? Nobody else has made that community. The community don't make the people. It's the people who make the community. Well, if the people aren't working, then what? What do you mean they aren't working? Because there's a lot of people that don't work. They're, they have to take their tongue like everybody else. There's other ethnic groups that don't work, and I don't only them. Let them work together. Learn how to live better and better life. And you're not going to learn about the fine law and order, destroying life and property. Who do that? They do it every day. What do you mean, who did that? You know, sometimes it gets a little, as I tell him, it gets a little too hot, you know. But. If, if it's coming out of his mouth, it's the truth. You know, it, 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 we won't tell a lie, even if it's... <laughs> if they <laughs> come to me like a ladies and gentlemen with a nice request, I treat them all alike. My argument is why talk to people from both sides of your mouth? That's what I don't like. I, I 
think I told you a story when I go to these meetings sometimes. Yeah. You get a lot of crackpot get up and ask such a silly question. What are you supposed to do? Just go down. Jeez. Oh, I couldn't, I, I couldn't imagine you doing that. And when you got 58, 59 years, come from the very bottom as a precinct captain, as a clerk in the county treasurer's office, as a deputy bailiff, as a section former street sanitation, as a ward superintendent, as a member of the legislature 14 years, end up to be the dean of the city council. These things don't happen overnight. Let's quit kidding ourselves. Now, if you want to say, well, I, I'm an alderman now, but the minute somebody raised their voice, I started trembling. Or somebody too humble come to me and I try and run over them. Well, that's where the people get the idea that you're a little crusty. I'll be 81 in September. What the heck? I don't <coughs> I can walk faster, talk faster than anyone that's in You can talk faster, yes. <laughs> I think if you if you were to uh, quit tomorrow, I think you would drop dead in six months. I'd give you six months because he, he could never stand it. We go to the we used to have a little place in the in Lake Geneva there. He'd be there for a couple of days while while he was pottering around, uh, cutting the grass or something, he'd be okay. And then the men said, what am I going to do now? Well, I said, relax. Oh, relax. So how could he live like that? Plus, I wouldn't be able to live either. <laughs> I think I could live when you're out. <laughs> it's too late to change it now. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's an idea. Perhaps I could change. Maybe I'll run against you. <laughs> they can listen to my voice for a change. <laughs> you take the most cosmopolitan award in Chicago like I got over here. Mm -hmm. You'll be elected yeah. 20 times for office, 19 times with no opposition. It isn't because I'm an Italian or because I'm an intellectual or I'm a millionaire. And he is not the type he, This fella, uh, the reason that you see the way we live, he is not interested in material things. He never was. <laughs> Maybe I would be a little bit, but he was never. So he's absolutely satisfied with his home, and he's not after any money, because what are we going to do with money, at our age especially? My children, thank God, they, we, they're educated. We educate them. We did it the hard way. But we're satisfied. They turned out very nice, we think. They're all safely married, and thank God, so far, everything is fine. You must understand to operate a political organization when you've got to put up with people of all work of life, religious leaders, business, industry, civic leaders. Public officials, don't, I don't make that much in five years what it costs me to operate this war. How much is it about? Well, at least uh, 60,000 a year. Now, we don't collect no dues here. We don't let any pay anyone pay five cents for any service that they get from this organization from the all my work commitment down to the prison camp. Everything here is service. Weddings, wakes, social affairs. Here, this is just tonight. Yeah. <coughs> this is a checkbook from the 25th Ward Regular Democratic Organization. That's right. It's your, your checkbook and you and Matt Roper sign it, huh? Either me and Matt Roper, either me and Bob Roper, or the executive secretary, either me or Mark or the That's Michael. your son? That's your yeah. oldest son? No, second. Mark or the me the state representative. Yeah. Rich Elrod Committee campaign donation, $2,000. And the people say, why do you have to give money? You don't have to do anything but kind. The only thing you've got to do someday is die. 
But you tell me how men can run for public office without a having raising funds. So I got a name second, and then if I play cards with my wife, I want to win. Election day, I want to win. And when you can't go to church with one money, so you've got to give a candidate money. Well, Chicago Florist from Mayflowers. Citizen for customer election donation. I thought uh, it's my candidate of my organization. I'm for county clerk. Robert Quintana, one table, two hundred fifty dollars. I'm going to vote seventy nine. Former well, commissioner. Walter Babe McAvoy. Defense fund dinner, one hundred dollars. What's that? Because he got to go to court, then he's out of money. And he was a friend of mine when I was in the legislature. The way Aldo Marzullo raises money in that board, he puts this ad book out once a year. And they run a dinner dance and they sell ads for the dinner dance. And the dinner dance is quite cheap. I think the tickets are $25 a ticket. The money comes in from the ad book in which they raise probably somewhere between sixty dollars to $70,000 in ads. The ads come from all over the city. People, these are friends of mine for 40, 50 years. They used to live in my ward when I was a producing cat. There's a friends that I make years in and years out. Why do they do that? Because they like to see me exist in politics and they, they have a respect for me. And sometimes I give them a service to you. 31, 40 South Kansas they have. That's, that's, that's Trying to West Side or 30, or one South Kansas they have. That's a good 2959 West 57th Street, just $200 ad, and he buys a table, $259 for dinner. This guy's been a friend of mine for a great number of years. The Ford. Trilla Steel Drum, that's where the. Is that the garbage cans? Yeah. Ford City, 76. That's a Harry Chad. If you know who this man Harry Chad is, it's out there let the people understand. Fifty-five years ago, I used to live in the building that I bought a couple of days later, 613 South Levis Street in my ward, and he had a trucking company. He was just out in the truck company on Pork and Campbell Avenue. That's how long I know him, 55 years. Our best wishes to Alman Marcelo from Thunderbird Catering, from Electric Service Corporations, Trilla Steel Drum Corporation, Ford City, Harry Chaddick, President. <laughs> This is a, a great gift from the Hollander Storage Cal Sag Auto Recycling. This is a great gift that the uh, Internal Revenue Service makes to someone in uh, Alderman Committee with Marzullo's uh, situation. It allows businesses to, uh, uh, to to pay money to a ward organization in what is in reality a political but what is allowed as a business deduction for advertising. Of course, you, you see going through this that the, the advertising value is zero, but there are other values, especially the, the gold bordered pages. Well, and why? Well, they cost extra, I'm sure. Yeah, come at the $200. Yeah. <laughs> figure how much uh, the gross take was on I, this? I didn't, I didn't calculate it up. It's in the neighborhood of $60,000. Yeah. You notice that every page is headed with the motto so that there won't be any misunderstanding. Voluntary advertising. You know, it's like the sergeant who said, I want four volunteers, you, 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 and you. You can't just criticize everybody and look for the needle in the haystack of all the mistakes that the party in power made. Who the heck doesn't make mistakes? The only one who don't make mistakes are people not doing anything. If you're aggressive, you're on the go, years in and you're out, sure you make mistakes. 
they got a mistake, you correct them. If you turn out to be crook, you go to jail. And only politician is a crook. Only the Democrats are crook. Well, I think you have to understand, uh, or the listeners have to understand, what, uh, what the Chicago political machine is. The Chicago political machine is an aggregation of about 35,000 people, uh, men and women, but of course mostly men, and uh, in all, almost all the high positions only men, who make a living off politics. That's their living. They make a living off politics, and they make it in a variety of ways. They make it by salaries, by holding positions, by jobs. They make it by perquisites. They make it by money that's, uh, that, that's made because you hold a job. They make it by contracts with the public agencies. They make it by the side lines. And we know from the public record that they make it from bribery. We know that not all of them. We know from the, the convictions of uh, Committeeman Keen, Paul Wagoda, and other aldermen and committeemen, they make it by bribery. And that that has been practiced uh, on a very wide scale. There's nothing to indicate that it's not being now, so that it's a large enterprise that's interested in making a living off politics. When you have that kind of organization uh, penetrating the city, penetrating all our local governments, you know that uh, the people who deal with local governments and expect to make money from them, or have made money from them, or are making money from them, certainly do not want to do anything that will create ill will. Alderman Dupre and Alderman Marzulloy are really the antithesis of each other in Chicago. Dupre is really the classic reformer, incorruptible, intelligent, hardworking, dedicated to what he considers to be the civic good. Marzullo is the machine politician. Taking care of people at the precinct level is his whole thing. I think uh, one thing about Alderman Dupre, he sees the picture, but he only sees a part of it. He considers the democratic machine in Chicago and people essentially, this is a money-making operation in which the captains are all making a living out of this and committeemen are making money. And that's partially true. But I, if you really understand the organization, the captains are also generally ombudsmen. That's their general function in life. Uh, most of them have jobs, but they don't have really good jobs. They have jobs where they make a living, and most of the good captains are working very hard on their jobs, too. They do a good job. Marzullo says the qualities that make a man a good precinct captain make him a good city worker, and that's generally true. The lash of patronage is the destruction of livelihood. That's the power of patronage. That's what makes uh, an organization authoritarian. You go to the ward meeting of an authoritarian committeeman, you don't hear any discussion of democratic principles. You hear a completely authoritarian, Hitler-style uh, tirade. And uh, the, the power of patronage, the lash of patronage, is the threat of the destruction of livelihood. And that's a very serious, very sinister thing. I've been in this country for 68 years. Never black mark against me when I had a chance to go in the gambling business, in the bootlegging business, and whatnot. Now, gee, does that mean anything to these so-called news media or these news well, they don't. What, what does it mean to them? What do you got to do to be right? Well, you keep going. I raised the I, I say what you've done is you've kept going and you've kept your mind right on what you want to do. We had nine children. Now, and there's some people, you know, there's every few years. There's, there's of course, you, you have to understand this, Rita, but the politicians, people have that impression that they're lying anyway. Whether you're telling the I truth or not. Wait a minute. You don't put all the eggs in one basket. Just a minute. I don't give a damn who lies who tells the truth. I know. I'm talking think about that. facts and figures that exist. Mm -hmm. But my sauce is I came in this country. And I went to school nine months. And I work every day. And I learn the machine trade on my own. I went in politics on my own. And I made a buck on the side. And I split with Uncle Sam. The record shows when I was selling real estate, when I was 24, 25 years old. I had a job making 175 a month. We were getting a kid every year. I used to sell real estate. I used to collect rent to run for property owners. I also made, made an extra buck. Otherwise, I could I We had nine children all together. We lost three. So this is, this is the thing that hurts you. And those jerks that want to talk about me, let them come face to face. 
Let him tell me where I'm wrong what I, and why I'm not in jail then. For God's sake, and that, that, those are the things that hurt you. And then you don't look at the family background, how I, uh, how I existed in this country for 68 years without a mother and father. Why, that's ridiculous. I think a lot of these fellows born and raised with a silver spoon in their mouth, their kids are full of dope, and they're a bunch of bums and stuff. Don't tell me any stuff like that. I, I know what I'm talking about. And this, that's the kind of people you got to pay attention to. And then somebody get on television, yap, 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 and I'm Len O'Connor. <laughs> Last night you went to a, a, a very private dinner with all the city council members and their wives. Did you, nice. you enjoy that kind of thing? Oh, well, yes, with the, because Mayor Blanding is, is going to make a very good mayor. He's, he's a wonderful, uh, yeah. and his wife is a he had tables of six each, a small table, and everybody said whatever they want to say. Now, who do you think he's sitting with? We had a table of six. Well, but that's because Len you're an old man, man and you're an older. Well, yeah, I'm not saying <laughs> I brag about it. The man and his wife, Almond Frost and his wife, and he's the floor, uh, the floor leader in the county and myself and the wife. Not because I'm more important than anybody else, but the respect the age, the respect the advice, and say, I mean, you know, he, well, you're supposed he's to be not mean. the man I know at all. You do as I say, don't do as I do, oh, you know. So, so we have some of our religious leaders that way, you know. They preach to everybody else. But, uh, but they say, do as I say, but don't do as I do. I am it. I teach what I practice myself. And you enjoyed that, though? Oh, yes, I do. Well, because well, I don't go to all. <laughs> I know. It's not so often that you go to those kinds of Oh, I go quite often. We have a table loaded now for the month of June. I'm going to show you that table in the bedroom, what I got from there till October. Dinner the 15th. Graduation party to 16. Elrod, huh? Elrod to 17. Richard Troy to 21st. Wedding to 24. Another wedding to 24. How you gonna do that? I gotta go to the boat. One is a neighbor here, known since he was born. Another one is the daughter of uh, my state senator committeeman and the district jack to his daughter to get married. June 25th, here's 24, 25th. Stanley Custer's cocktail party, $5,000 work. $5,000 worth of tickets through the ward organization. From the World Organization to each campaign. So you pay for that, you get your tickets, and then your captains and your people get to go. Huh? Yeah. But I don't sell them to anybody. We just take it out of the organization. Yes, I don't. You saw the thing I got from the Mount Sinai Hospital there? The Man of the Year Award. Yeah. That, yes. was, uh, that was last year, huh? Yeah, October. Yeah. That one made you as happy as almost any of them, I think. Okay, yeah, that's very nice of you. That's fair. That's very nice. They did do because I was Italian either. I think they did it because you're an intellectual. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I'm good humanitarian. <laughs> then we got this from the Kent College. This from my white organization. They give me 25 years service as alderman. They give you one from this, from, uh, Harvard, too? No. I didn't see one, but they want me back. <laughs> That's a better payoff, huh? They want to make me. You do a double one. <laughs> they want to make me an honorary member. An honorary member of the faculty? Yeah. Oh, that's good. Maybe you can show us, you go out and show us the, just the, the back porch, which you're starting to do in, in the no. neighborhood. Much to see in the back porch there. The flowers are just planted this last week. This is where the elite live. <laughs> it's 
quite like your drive, isn't it? <laughs> Not very much difference. <laughs> Somebody get on television, yap, 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 and I'm Len O'Connor. 